What's up, guys? Welcome to a new podcast, and this is now take two. I just did this then, and it was a 30-minute podcast that I noticed that I didn't record. So we're going to do this again. Same energy, and let's get cracking. So this episode, well, last week was my birthday, and I was, you know, uh, 31. So I thought, you know what? Why don't I say the 21 things that I've learned in 31 years? So here's 21 in 31. Now, surprisingly, there's not a lot about fitness. I think I've only got like literally one in there. Um, a lot of it was also just life and, and business related. So um, if you're into any fitness, then I'm sorry, you're going to be a bit disappointed um, with this podcast. So let's get started. Um, number one, do not care about people's opinions um, from people that you don't even care about. This is something that's taken me a while to, I guess, wrap my head around um, trying to you know, disregard people's opinions that I don't really care about. Um, but that statement there, do not care about people's opinions from people you don't even care about, was the one statement that actually resonated with me when I heard that. That's when I started to click and I started to be more myself. Um, I guess I'm, what I'm referring to is social media. Um, once I learned that, then I was able to be a lot more genuine with what I was posting, with what I was trying to tell, um, with who I was trying to be as well. Um, but I also think, you know, that probably comes with a bit like with age. And as you start to get older, you know, you start to accept yourself a lot more. But, you know, if you can actually you know, resonate that with you and you are younger um, than my 31, 31 years, then, you know, that's really good because, you know, then you can be your genuine self and um, you can be a lot happier when you start being yourself. And the thing is as well, people see straight through you. And if you're not being yourself, um, people will see that, you know, so just be genuine. Okay, uh, number two, you need to take risks to get ahead. Now. This one is a big one because it's kind of how I took that leap into, you know, building squat club. Like I was, uh, I was just in the garage before this squat club. And then, you know, so I got in from a, you know, a 25 square meter garage into a thousand square meter gym. Now it's a big jump, but it was a risk that, uh, I guess we could say it was a bit of a calculated risk. You know, I obviously didn't have my eyes closed and think, oh, let's just go and do it. It was a bit calculated, but it, it was a risk that I was willing to take. Um, another risk that you know, I took was getting into personal training, getting into the fitness industry in the first place because I was in an office before this, hated my life, and um, I decided to take the, the risk and the jump from going from earning a salary and being in a stable income to then going and jumping ship into the fitness industry where I was going to be running my own business um, and then making my own money. So that was a big risk. And, you know, my dad isn't a risk taker. So trying to, you know, I didn't want to tell him what my plans were, especially while I was studying my certificates. I was never going to tell him, you know, that I was going to becoming a personal, become a personal trainer because I knew that he would do everything in his power to try and talk me out of it. So I wasn't taking this risk. Um, and I didn't tell him until once I completed my certificate, I was then able to give him <laughs> give him the news that I had just resonated from my current job and I was going into becoming a personal trainer, um, which at that point he couldn't do anything anymore. He couldn't stop me. So, you know, like that was my risk. Um, and I've never looked back. You know, there are always going to be risks as well that, you know, that might not pay off, but, you know, you do, you need to take risks to kind of to get ahead. Okay, number three, if you're not failing, you're not pushing hard enough. Um, you know, you can't always be staying um you know you, you have to keep pushing hard especially when it comes to, to business um and it can, i guess it can resonate with a lot of other things too but um you know i've tried many many different things and i've tried so many things that heaps have not pulled off but you need to you need to try that because one you're also going to learn what you did wrong but then also two you're going to be pushing further to kind of progress your career and if you keep just staying you know in your small little circle you're not going to grow um it's not going to challenge you and you're not going to be a better person for it either so you know you do you need to fail you need to take those lessons as well to be able to keep growing number three no that was number three number four everything happens for a reason 
Okay, so I'm a massive believer in this one. If everything, in everything happens for a reason, um, I think everything literally falls into place for a certain, certain reason. Um, I guess one of them that I can pinpoint back to is before I opened Squat Club, I knew where the location of where I wanted it to be. The location was great. It was in a place where it had a great location, a great area. Um, it had great uh, driving traffic, so people would see it. Uh, a lot of people would have seen it and would have had, uh, visioned it. I was going to say Squat Club, right above the doors. <clears throat> you were driving, you weren't going to miss it. And it was right next to a, across the road from a master's um, in a big suburb too. So it, it was, you know, it was going to be, everyone was going to see it. Um, I envisioned everything in that gym. Um, and it was, for me, it was going to be perfect. Um, but then as the building started to commence and we signed some, some, uh, some terms, when we looked at the contract, there was a lot of things in there that uh, wasn't going to be favoring me. It was going to be favoring them. Um, and things that I would have been liable, liable for where I wouldn't be liable for that in different other contracts. Long story short, um, my solicitor, she said to me, Ash, we're going to have to pull you out of this. This is not a good move for you. And it's going to be really, really difficult to even to get out of this. Um, and it's going to be really hard for you to, to keep your head above water um, with these terms that they've set here. I was devastated um, because I had my heart set on this place. I looked at this place bef before it was even built. You know, it was just dirt. Um, and then I thought, you know, nothing is going to compare to where that place was. I actually had all this equipment on the way to from overseas. So I was actually on a time frame of where I could go and find another location. Um, and like I said, then I, I, don't, I didn't think there was going to be something that um, was going to be as good. I looked around. But then I found the location where Squat Club is now, and <clears throat> it was also getting built at the exact same time, so it was also brand new, but it was bigger, and it was also cheaper. So, um, and the, actually, the location is a lot better too, especially for, for parking um, than where it was before. So, you know, all in all, you know, things happen for a reason, and, they, and even though I didn't see that at the, at the time, I look back now and think, yeah, I'm so glad that I wasn't in that location where I, where I was going to be and I'm here. Number five, there is a never a perfect time to start business. So start now. There never will be. Um, there's never going to be a, a perfect time. And if you don't start now, someone else is going to start that exact same business and you're just going to get more and more behind. So there's no point dwindling on it. And if you're thinking about it, then just take that first step. And you're going to keep getting better and better and better, which is I'm going to lead to, to that um, on another, po another point. But you just need to take that first step. And once you do that, you got your foot in the door and then you can progress there and you don't know where that's going to take you. But you're not going to do any wonders for yourself. It's just by sitting back and not taking that first step. So, so literally just start now, especially now. Look, we're 2020. There's so many different other resources that you can learn from as well. There's Instagram. Um, there's other people that you can follow their journeys. There's YouTube. Um, there's that many audio books. There's people out there. There's podcasts like this. You know, there's people that actually want to help too. So you know, reach out to people. Um, watch certain things that's going to be relevant to you. But just take that first step into starting. Number six, if you have thought about doing something for over a month, then just go and do it. And it kind of is similar to number number five, but. You know, this is to do with anything, you know, whether you're looking at, you know, going on a holiday or you're going to, you know, you're wanting to buy a certain car, you keep thinking about the car, like just pull the trigger. If you're thinking about it for such a long time, don't just sit on your ass and think, oh, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. Like, don't be a thinker, be a doer. Just go up and act and do it. Number seven, this is the only fitness one here on this 21. For general population, training intensity plays a massive part in your progress. So when it comes to training, the intensity of what you're lifting plays a huge role into your progress. And the intensity is, I'm not, it's not saying in terms of how, um, how intense it was and your heart rate is up you know, sky high. I'm talking about how intense it was um, you know, in terms of the strength aspect of it. So what we call in the coaching world is an RPE. So a rated perceived exertion. And it's a, basically it's a scale of one to 10 and it's telling you exactly how hard that that set needs to be for you. 
So an RPE of 10 would mean that you're failing on the very, very last rep. An RPE of nine would mean you're failing, or sorry, you're one rep away from failure. An RPE of eight is where you are reaching two reps away from failure at the end of the band of reps. So, and, and it keeps going and so forth. So understanding how the intensity works is going to be really, really important part to your training. Um, and if for a lot of people who don't understand, it can be very underestimating. So definitely learn about the RPE when it comes to training. Number eight, you are a reflection of the five people you are closest to. Now, if you think about that and sit down and have a look, look around who are those five people that you hang around, you're more likely to be like them. So if you have different goals, different aspirations, um, you know, you're going down different paths then, and you are different to, to those people, there's a good chance that you need to separate yourself from them uh, to stop pulling you back. You need to make sure that you're surrounding yourself around positive people that's going to be able to encourage you, support you, give you advice and to help educate you and want to see you do well. So they're the people that you want to be around. Um, by putting yourself around those type of people, that's who you're going to be more like. So think about who you want to be and have a look at that circle that are around you and just see if does that go hand in hand. And if not, then maybe you need to look at getting some new people around you. Number nine, saying thank you goes a long way. That's something that's, um, you know, I think has been important for me recently. Um, something that I've learned, just this is a recent one. I've always found it hard to thank people, especially who are closer to me, just because of my upbringing. Um, that my, my, when I was growing up with my brothers, like they wouldn't be, um, they wouldn't say thank you or anything like that because I guess we were just boys as we grew up. So, especially when it comes to people that are closer to me, I found it hard to show my appreciation to people. Um, but now I'm learning that you need to show your appreciation to the people who are, you know, who are going to be doing things for you, um, who want to, to see the best in you um, and also just want to help. So by showing that appreciation, you know, is a really grateful thing for people. Number 10, in business, don't take no as an answer. So when I first started before Squat Club, I remember when I, I purchased equipment and I purchased, I'd say about 50 to 60% of the equipment at that time. Um, and then I was going to get a loan for the other one, for the other part. But once we had done everything, we had selected shipping and we had it all ready to go. The other one, the other batch was already going to be on its way. It was already being made. Then the stuff that I was going to get on loan, which we really needed for the gym, I, I, uh, I couldn't get the loan. and. I thought, how am I going to operate a gym without this stuff that I actually needed? Like, I can't remember on the top of my head what it actually was now. I think it was you know, the, the big squat rack that we have um, and a cable machine. Um, and I think there was a couple other major items as well that we needed to actually, we actually needed to operate to actually to be a gym. Uh, and they declined me. They said no. So I didn't know what to do. But at that point, I thought, you know, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't think I can actually own a gym. But in business, a no is just a hurdle. It's just a barrier. So you need to find loopholes or ways around the no's because no is not the final answer. Um, so please know that, that if, if there is a no when you're in business, um, there is definitely a yes somewhere. You just need to find it. Number 11, research the top restaurants in the area for your holiday. I can't tell you how different my holidays have been to other people's who have been in the same location, but because I re we researched where we were going to eat and we're going to go for like restaurants and cafes and breakfast, um, as opposed to someone else who didn't do that and just kind of went on you know, off the bat. We've had two different experiences. Um, I think that the restaurants, going to a restaurant is obviously, and, and going and eating on holiday is a massive part of your holiday. Uh, and it's a really good experience. So understand exactly where you want to go. So research and find the top places. Like, you know, when we've been to, we've been to Bali so many times and we've been in different places, but every time we will research and find where the, the great places are to go out and eat that has a great vibe 
um, that has a really good experience and we'll go to different ones each time we go. But that also makes the holiday um, as opposed to I've heard other people go there that they didn't like it, but they didn't know where else to go and they started eating uh, like other shitty food and it was like street food as well. So like it changes your total experience. Um, when we went to New York, we had a, like an itinerary of where to actually go for breakfast and also for dinner uh, for every night. Like I remember one of them where you were walking down the street in New York and you come up to the front of it and it was like a pawn shop. So there was like all this jewelry and other secondhand stuff. And then you go to like, it was only very small on the street. Then you go to the back door towards the back door and there's a security guard kind of standing there by the back wall and you go through the door and you open up and it's just like this another world that you open up and it's like this grand chandelier this huge grand staircase, um, like the lights were all dim, the music was pumping, there was so many people, there was a bar and like people are having tapas dinner. That was such a, such a cool experience and that was still something that I remember and I'll take and I'll remember for the rest of my life. It's just it's such a cool vibe and a cool experience. But that's w- what we did is we researched, we knew exactly where to go, find all the best places for food and it changed our entire experience. Whereas the first time I we went to New York, like I didn't know exactly, we didn't know where to go and I didn't really like it as much. So researching exactly where to go can definitely change your experience on your holiday. Number 12, nothing's perfect and you will always find something to improve on. This goes for, I guess, anything like, like starting something. If you want to put something out there for people, you want to sell something um, or you're trying to build something, the, the best thing to do is kind of just start and getting it out there because you always want to improve on your own product or whatever it is with your own service. And it kind of goes back into before about, you know, just sitting on your ass or not starting and getting your foot in the door, like literally just do it because then you can, once you, once you push this out or whatever it is that's out there, you know, you can get the feedback from customers or from clients or um, from friends or family and you can work on it, but just get it out there. Another example would be like Apple, <clears throat> Apple where, you know, they, they know what they're doing with their iPhones for, like for the next 10 years. Like everything's already done in the pipeline. And people come out and say like, oh, you know, I don't, don't like Apple. Apple should have this. They should have that. Why haven't they done this? But, you know, everything they do is for a certain reason. And those things that people are asking for, they've already got it in the pipeline. And it's, it's going to be there, but it's not ready yet. And then every year they have a better iPhone and a better iPhone and a better iPhone. And like every year it keeps improving. And it, and it brings new people in, but it also brings returning customers in as well. And then they're the ones that want an, an, the new iPhone every year. And they're the ones lining up and getting the next iPhone, the next iPhone. And they always want it because it's always also it's better every year. <clears throat> so you can see that don't worry about trying to perfect something. Just get it out and just get better and better at it as you keep progressing. Number 13, sometimes you need to spend money to make money. So. It's just a quick context, of like even for the gym. Now, when we first opened, we didn't have a lot of equipment and a lot of the gym was bare with the, with the sheer size of it as it is. So we had basically like, you know, equipment around the sides and then there was like nothing in, so much in the middle. But as we progressed and more members started coming in, we could then reinvest the money back into the business and buy more equipment, but then that was also bringing more people in because we were filling it up more. So by spending more money, we will be able to bring more members in. So um, that's just, I guess, like a little context of where to put it. But you, you, like in business, you need to actually spend money to be able to make money. And if, you, if you're a bit of a tight ass and you don't want to spend money, um, then you know, you're not going to get that far. Number 14. Investing in yourself will be the best thing that you'll ever spend your money on. Now, I understand that the feeling of you know buying a pair of shoes or going on a holiday uh, is is a nice feeling. Like buying those shoes is good, all right? And then wearing them for the first couple of times is an awesome feeling. But the feeling of purchasing something and investing in a, a what maybe it's a course or is it maybe it's personal training or it could be you know education of some sort. Think about what that's actually going to be doing for your life. You're improving your quality of life. You could be um, helping improve your career, your pathway or wherever you want to go. You could be um, improving your fitness. You could be you know, helping towards your goals. 
see how those things they're going to start to imp- improve you as a person as opposed to something that could be materialistic that yeah it might feel might feel good right at the start but you know that'll go away so spend money on yourself invest in yourself invest in your brain progress yourself become more knowledgeable you know whether it could be even fitness like if you're after a specific goal then invest in someone who's a professional that can help you get to where you want to be All right, number 15, your career will go further in something that you're passionate about rather than what you fall yourself into. So like I was saying before is that, you know, I started out in, in an office and I hated it. I hated it so much. And because I didn't like it, I then wasn't good at it because I chose to not learn more about it or I chose not to, you know, improve myself in the business. And because I wasn't doing that, and I was leaving literally on time, uh, like as soon as five o'clock finished, bang, I was out the door. Um, and because of all that, people then started to resent me as well because I didn't want to be there and I wasn't good at it. Whereas then I progressed and found something where I got into fitness and I found my passion. And from that, I've been able to progress my career and keep progressing and keep progressing. And I keep working on it and keep getting, trying to look at how, to, how can I get better how can i build my business even better and bigger be able to help more people and that's because i'm so passionate about it when you find something that you're passionate about you're gonna keep trying to get better at it and then that's when you will keep climbing i guess the ladder so to speak um in whatever the industry that is you're in but you know find something that you are passionate about and the the turning factor the turning point for me was i watched this video and it was on YouTube and it was called, What If Money Was No Object? And it's like literally like probably like a three minute video. But when I was in the crossroads of thinking, do I stay in this office where, you know, I've got a guaranteed salary and I'm safe and I get nine to five and that's what I know? Or do I go out and do something where I, I could go out but, and do something that I'm passionate about but then I also need to, you know, I need to fund for myself because then I'm running my own business. Like it's a huge risk. I didn't know what to do, or, you know, and I thought, how, how am I going to, what do I do here? So because I was at this crossroads, I watched this video, what if money was no object? And like I said, it was like three or four minutes, but that gave me my answer. Straight away, I knew exactly what, the, what, what I wanted to do. I took the steps of what I had to do and I started straight away. So if you're in a crossroads, then I do recommend go and watch that. Go and watch that video, three or four minutes on YouTube. I don't know who it is, but if you type in what if money was no object, you'll definitely find it. Number 16, helping others is the most satisfying feeling in the world. You couldn't pay me enough. If you were to give me money to be able to help someone, like I would choose at helping someone. Like that's such a powerful feeling. Um, and you know, I was, I was speaking to my mom the other day and I was saying to her, um, I remember sitting in bed, uh, I don't know, actually it might've been about four or five years ago. And I still remember, I actually still remember it though. I was sitting in bed and I thought, this is what I was put on this earth to do. I was put on this earth to be able to help people. And I felt so fulfilled and so satisfied. And I just knew that this was my, my calling and this was my spot. And that's where we've just been able to help build Squat Club even more and more is because that's what our purpose is. Our purpose is to just keep helping and change people's lives. And we don't do anything else. We don't go out and chase money. We're not a business that's just trying to like generate income or build and get bigger and bigger will make people just become a number like it is literally very personal and we just want to keep changing and impacting lives and um there is actually there's no better feeling in the world than trying to help people whether it is even just like fitness or whether it's helping with people with education and kind of like this is why i like doing these podcasts is because you know I, i'm finding other ways able to help people like i love it like it's it's the best feeling in the world um and i'm proud to know it by 31 as well 
Number 17, the best way to sell something is by not selling something. So it's 2020, everyone is starting to understand how marketing works and you can smell a sale a mile away now. And the people that are trying to direct sell you products, you're more inclined to turn away or to, you know, even if it is on social media, you will hide them or unfollow them. Um, or you avoid certain people because you know that they're going to hard say, give you a hard sale. Um, whereas you need to you need to find other ways to be able to give people trust in you, your product, your service. Um, and that's what like we do is you won't find like Squat Club. We won't sell you stuff. We're not going to sell. Like we want to just find ways to keep giving you value, keep trying to help you um, with problems that you may have and just try and help find solutions and that's all we want to do is just try and keep providing value like when people come in into, into these doors like we don't do any hard sales you won't find us being able to like write their number down and try and chase them up and give them a call like that's not who we are like if people want to be here then they'll be here if they don't want to be here they're not right for squat club so you know you just got to find the right people the right approach and that's, I guess, in terms of like selling, as a, so, so to speak, is just trying like, think about just helping people. And if you help people, you know, people may want to come back into your business. I started doing that when I first started uh, personal training. Like before it, Instagram was a thing, I had a Facebook page where I would just keep trying to provide education and content and value and education and content. And then that's how my clientele started to increase is just by people seeing that. I'm a trusted source um, and, you know, I'm educated and wanting to help. I'm giving people, getting people results. Like that's how, how I grew my own small personal training business to kind of get towards, you know, with the position where I am right now. So don't, don't do any hard sales and just try and find the best thing for someone to be able to help them. All right, next one. I'm losing out where I am here. Number eight. 18, I'm 18. When it comes to high hiring or buying a service, you get what you pay for. So I had this conversation um, with one of the girls who worked for me last night. <clears throat> and uh, she was saying that when she first came in, so she used to be a member, when she came in for the first time and we, someone, we, we walked her around and we, we spoke to her, she ended up leaving because she found that we were too expensive. She then shopped around and she went to a different gym and it was a lot cheaper. And then it's where she went. About four to five months afterwards, she left that place and came straight back to Squat Club. And, uh, and ever since then, she's been here for maybe like three years now and loves it. And, you know, it just shows you that it's, it shouldn't be about the price. You know, if you're after something, specific then go out and find that with the quality so uh like what she did then so she left didn't sign up with squat club but then went somewhere else paid money at this certain other place then left it then came back to squat club so in the long run she had that she actually spent more money by going somewhere else cheaper seeing that it's not going to work then coming back to squat club to then get the results that she was after um, another example would be like going out, going out and buy a car. Like you're going to get what you pay for, you know, like if you go out and buy, you know, a cheap $3,000 car, you're going to expect a cheap $3,000 car. Whereas you go out and buy like a Mercedes, you're going to expect that high, that high and that top quality. So, um, and if with a cheap car, like that's going to be unreliable, it's going to break down, you know, it's going to have issues. It's going to cost money again to fix it. Well, then you may need to go out and buy another one. And then another one, another one. And you start to see, you're like, oh, man, I actually should have just bought the one that's a bit more expensive. It's, it's got the quality. You could also like look at doing that. So, you know, just remember that, that you get what you pay for. Number 19, don't be the smartest person in the room. And if you are, find some, someone smarter. Um, because if you're not learning, you're not growing. And this doesn't go for just like, I guess, like as a whole general, or find someone who's smarter than you and everything. You know, if there's something that you want to learn about, learn from, then 
go out and and find someone that's actually smarter than you in that in those instances so go out and find someone like that number 20 imitation is the best form of flattery and if someone is in t- is imitating you then you're obviously doing something right now this is something that i found a while ago a long time ago where i'd find some certain people start to copy what i was doing and um at first i was pretty pissed off you know <laughs> i was yeah, I could, you could say I was pretty pissed off. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? If they're copying what I'm doing, then I must be doing something right. And then as well, going back to one of the other ones where if you need to also be yourself and be genuine. So these people weren't being themselves or being genuine, started to copy what I was doing and no one can do anything. No one can be better than you are at being genuine about yourself. So they started to copy things that I was doing, but they obviously couldn't have done it as good as what I could normally do. So I looked at it, I laughed it off, and I thought, you know what, that's fine. I don't mind because I know who I am as a person. I know I'm genuine, and I know that I can be able to help in my own way. If people want to copy that, then let them copy, but they'll end up getting found out anyway. So um, you know, think of it as a form of flattery that you actually are doing something right. Number 21, the last one, under promise and over deliver rather than over promise and under deliver. Okay. So when this is something, this is something that really pisses me off if, if people do it to me is that you need to make sure that you, if you're going to do something for someone and, but you're, you know, you're more inclined to actually not do it, but you say you're going to do it. That's where it can, it can piss people off. Make sure that if you are going to do something, maybe just don't tell them that you're going to go and do it. Instead, just go and do it for them because they're going to, be, they're going to feel surprised and you're going to give them a bit of a better service um, than rather saying something and then forgetting about it or not even doing it themselves. So something that um, I've always found as a pet peeve for me and I've just always made sure that I never do it is under-promising, uh, sorry, is over-promising and then under-delivering. I always want to make sure that I'm under promising and over delivering. So they're the 21 things that I've learned in 31 years. And uh, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this. I hope at least one thing you took away. Um, And if it's been really helpful, I really appreciate that you uh, subscribe. Or if you're watching the YouTube video, then make sure to like. And um, if you think it's going to help someone uh, from this podcast, then please share this out and it can really help more people. So thanks very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys next episode. All right, peace.